Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hola, and welcome to Hawaii Food and Farmers Series, where we meet with Hawaii's farmers, foodies, and everyone shaking up the local ag scene here in Hawaii. I am your host today, Matt Johnson, and as always, uh, you can tweet in and join the conversation at ThinkTechHI, and you can also join the conversation by calling in at 808-374-2014. Uh, as always, we have great, interesting guests, and today we have with us Lizzie Porter, with Green or Bees Greens Company, and talking about her new uh, container farming uh, venture. I just recently started back in October of last year, and um, recently I just met you, Lizzie, at uh, a Pahana last week, and I was kind of yeah. <laughs> eavesdropping uh, your conversation. You're kind of talking about your venture, so I was very excited to meet you and uh, hear more about it. So. Thank yeah. you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so we have a lot to talk about and not nearly enough time, so <laughs> we're just going to jump right into it. Right. Um, so yeah, what is Green's Be or Bees Green's company? Um, so Bees Green's company uh, is a, a farm in a box, basically. Um, it's a vertical hydroponics inside of a shipping container um, that we started uh, back in October, um, and it's located in Waipahu. Um, just in a parking spot, basically, in front of a, a self-storage facility. Um, that we're growing leafy greens in there uh, right now, and the idea is really just to be as resource efficient as possible and space efficient as possible, um, and doing it in a really kind of tech-forward way. Um, so, for example, I didn't actually come from ag, but because um, because of the way that the system is set up and um, how how facilitated everything has been by the good tech. Um, I can monitor all from the phone, and so far, no big disasters yet. And you know, I'm selling in farmers markets, and um, yeah. Cool, so I think what's really fascinating is that you're combining you know, a few different things. Like people are familiar with hydroponic farming, mm -hmm. and people maybe even heard of uh, container farming, but I, I think what was really caught my attention is how you know, everybody knows you know, accessing land I can be really hard in Hawaii. And even if you are able to access land, then you have all these other challenges of irrigation and the equipment that you need and being outdoors. Um, so talk a little bit about the, so, so you have this container. Why don't we start with, talk a little bit about the, the container setup. So you have a, a farm in a box and you, 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 you purchased this from a company that was already existing, or what, what is that setup like? So, um, yeah, we got the, the uh, container from a company called Freight Farms, who's based in Boston, um, and they have been in business for a few years, and they retrofit shipping containers, um, like insulated shipping containers, to be these really efficient growing machines, um, and they, it's called the Leafy Green Machine, um, and they... Uh, because they've been doing it for a few years, they have a lot of really good um, insights about it and have been a really great support. So um, we bought the tech from them um, from Boston and had to get it all shipped over to Hawaii, which yeah. was kind of an adventure. Um, we'll, we'll but, be talking more about that. <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, so now that it's here, um, the way that it works is it's um, we'll start plants uh, horizontal, like as you know normal plants are. But once they're a few weeks old and they're strong enough, we can put them into these towers. Um, so and then, more of a vertical growing method. Right. Yeah. So we, then we, we can just hang these seven foot towers from the walls. Um, and that's what makes it so um, space efficient and water efficient. And because the whole thing is a container, um, we're not losing any water to evaporation or, you know, like to ground soil. Um, we, you know, we can be in control of the whole system. We don't have to use any spray. Um, we know we're not getting into the neighbor's spray. Um, and because of our location um, and sort of just the environment inside, we don't, we don't have any risk of um, slugs or the rat lungworm threat or any of that. Yeah, so. Yeah. Wow. So uh, talk a little bit more about the um, the technology it was freight freight farms freight is farms. the name of the, yeah. the company based out of Boston. Um, so talk a little bit about the so you have the the hydroponic technology, but what else is happening in the space you mentioned before that there's software that you're using. So yeah. imagine there's monitoring systems. Can yeah, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so c pretty much everything is controlled. We have um, we have a power hookup and a water hookup, and then um, we have it on. So there's sensors that can tell me when the water is low, when it's high, um, and it'll the water will automatically go on once the, the reservoirs get too low. Wow. Um, and it'll fill back up to 
you know, until the little high sensor goes on and then it'll shut off. Um, it monitors um, the pH levels in the water. It, me it measures the um, like electroconductivity of the water, and through those, it can monitor if it needs more nutrients. If the if the pH is too high, we have a pH um, upper, we have a pH lower, so we can adjust everything that way. Um, and I get all the data uh, in an app on my phone. Um, so is uh, a software built by that same company, Freight Farms. It's called Farmhand, um, and that um, yeah, it's it's. A really interesting tool. Um, so I can see, I can see all of that data. Uh, I can also control everything. Uh, I can turn things on or off. If something, wow. if it, you know, I get a call. Um, as I said, I'm at a, in front of a storage facility, and this actually happened once where I got a call saying, um, "There's a lot of water coming out of your farm." And I was living up on North Shore, but I can, you know, get on the app, turn off the water that was flooding, and make sure everything's okay from there. And wow. Um, so that, yeah, that's been really important. Um, but the other great thing about it is it keeps track of all the data. So there is an analysis tool in there. So I can go back in and if I'm noticing that, you know, the plants aren't looking the color I want or whatever, I can sort of look in and see like, oh, like, you know what, that the EC levels have been getting low. Maybe there aren't getting enough nutrients. Yeah. Or like I noticed that um, every time the pump goes on, the humidity is going up. Oh, like maybe there's some leaking going on there, maybe you know, dripping, something like that. So that, it's been a really important tool to the business. That, I mean, that's all the kind of information that you know, any farm would love to have. But if you're out in an open field, I mean, it's much harder to be able to you know, capture that information and be in control of the different gauges, whether it's irrigation or things like that, um, especially if you're on the North Shore and your farm is in Waipahu. Yeah. Um, that's that's uh, amazing to be able to have that control. Um, talk a little bit, so what are the kind of things are you growing? So right now, um, we're mostly growing lettuces. Um, we've done a little experimenting with herbs, um, starting to get into microgreens, did some edible flowers, just kind of feeling it out. Um, but because we can keep the whole thing a little colder and a little more controlled than um, the outside environment, it's really kind of been um, been something where we want to find uh, the right lettuces and things that people are interested in um, and can't already grow traditionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the point isn't to like come in and like kick out farmers who are doing well, right? Yeah, like yeah. the point is to, um, you know, bring down the, the amount of food that's getting imported because some stuff's not going to grow as well here traditionally. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if that has to be imported, that's a big cost, um, just in the quality of the food that's being imported, but also the environmental cost and all that. Yeah. Um, so we've been growing, uh, like Butterhead has been doing really well for us. It always looks like a pretty green flower and um, tastes great. It's pretty right. soft and always does really well at the farmer's market. Sells out first every time. Nice. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've been doing some romaine, which has been good. Um, and that's a typically a cooler climate green. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I mean, I think it can grow here as well, but you know, it's been interesting too, just the setup of the farm being its own little controlled environment. Um, you know, that whole romaine scare on the on the mainland. Oh right. Yeah. You know, we know that we're we're our own little system. We got we don't have any worries for that. So. Yeah. Um, between those um, and then some other, a couple other varieties of, of lettuces, leafier greens and things we've been experimenting with. Cool. Um, so talk a little bit about the, the your actual location. So so basically, I'm, um, I know we have a, a picture in here at some point we'll be able to see the actual container, but it's basically just a regular shipping container and you have it parked outside of storage, yeah, StoreQuest in Store Waipaho, and there's a picture of it right now. So. I, and to me, I think this story in itself is fascinating. So basically, you're parked right now uh, in what is typically set up as RV parking for the storage place? Right. So it was parking spots um, in front of the building that could be rented out. Um, and uh, they just didn't typically have um, tenants on those spots. And it was kind of challenging for them to rent it out. Um, and so I got to talking with them. and. Um, basically decided that it could be a beneficial partnership for everybody. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we got this container, um, and after the, the whole hassle of getting it here, um, we, we got it, it could be in front of the spot, which has actually been really nice too, just to be kind of on the side of the highway, you know, and um, and kind of be in like this odd little, odd little, little place on the side of a highway that's not, you know, not necessarily beautiful ag land um, or any of that, but it's... And this um, is in Waipahu off of Farrington Highway? This is, yeah, that's Farrington Highway in the photo. <laughs> nice. um, yeah, there's going to be a subway stop there when that, or when the, okay. whenever the, the metro opens, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, so it's been really good there. And that's kind of another reason why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it is um, I really came to this whole project from the perspective of futurism. And there's some really interesting questions about what the, what the future is going to look like. Um, and one thing that really kind of has been a question for me and, and for my family is, as cars become autonomous and car ownership goes away, like there's going to be these parking spots, there's going to be parking lots, there's going to be um, you know carports and garages that are not necessarily needed to be for cars anymore. Mm -hmm. If you we're all just effectively Ubering in, in an autonomous car all the time, yeah. um, so it's kind of a question of what can we do with that space um, and still have. You know, if people want to live on the ag land or grow stuff that can't be grown the way that I'm growing it um, on that land, it can stay for that, and we can sort of take these other less beautiful places and, and turn them into really productive. Um, They're like cool the side spots. of Farrington Highway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get some palm trees. I like there. the picture in the background right now. <laughs> um, we definitely want to talk about the future of of all this, but uh, we'll get a little more background on. You know, how did you get into this? And I know you've got some, you have some partners, and and what, you know, how did this this all come about? Um, so yeah, it, I mean, it came about because um, sort of looking, trying to answer these questions of what the future is going to be like. Mm -hmm. um, and one kind of you know big, big thing that keeps coming up is in 2050 there's going to be 10 billion people. How do you feed 10 billion people? Um, and so because of kind of being curious about that and wanting to know more about that, um, that's how I came to know the company Freight Farms in Boston. Mm. Um, and I kind of had that in the back of my mind. And um, just being out here and really hearing that, you know, knowing that 85% of the food is imported and, and the cost of, of, as I was saying, you know, the cost of the quality and the environmental cost of that, plus, you know, the insecurity of when it dumps rain and takes out the windward side, um, you know, that's really challenging. And there's some scary, you know, rat lungworm stuff here. And um, it kind of all just lined up really well that this this little efficient box, um, this safe little box could fit really well here um, and help with a problem of, of, you know, answering the question of helping now of bringing down the amount of food that's imported, but also kind of helping to experiment and answer the question of like, how are we going to grow more efficiently, mm -hmm. more consistently? Um, and sort of just decentralize it, you know, like have it, don't have it be one big network that can be in trouble and make it, having a system that's really turnkey enough that someone like me, who didn't come from ag, can yeah. kind of just step in and, and start growing. Um, so that's, that's sort of how I got started. And then, yeah, just, just knowing that it would, it seemed like a really good fit here. And the more I kept pushing on it, kept trying to find the problems of the idea, and yeah. there weren't any ones that I couldn't overcome so far. So... So I'm here doing it. <laughs> well, so yeah, I'm curious, what what is your background then? So you just started this, you know, obviously been probably planning for for a couple of years, but you had the container arrive last October. What you know, what is your background? You said you didn't you don't come from a ag background, but yeah, um, no, I I studied science in school. I was always kind of a science and tech person, um, and I had done a little bit of hydroponic gardening on my own. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of familiar with the concepts and um, how to do it. Um, but I, I don't know, I've never really been an office job kind of person, and um, I wanted to do something that really got me excited to talk about it, you know, and um, something that I really believed in. Uh, and so I had, I've had a lot of sort of crazy ideas <laughs> that don't always work out. And, you know, I was um, like teaching scuba in Malibu for a little while and you know, a lot of different things. Um, but this is, yeah, this has been the one that, like, Every time I kept coming back to it, it, it kept seem, seeming like a good idea, and yeah, no major roadblocks, and people um, really, the people I really um, trust and, um, you know, that are my support system really agreed with the idea, and they helped me, helped me get it going. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, we're going to take a, a quick one-minute break, and then we're going to come back and talk more about uh, the future and talk more about the systems. And uh, yeah, so we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on ThinkTech's Likeable Science Show. Every Friday at 2 p.m., we delve in the magical, magical, fascinating world of science. How science applies to your life, why you should care about science, what impact science has on you and on those around you, why you need to know some science. It's a fun, interesting, painless way to learn some good science that you can use. See you there. 
Hey, aloha everybody. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Andrew Lanning, the security guy. I host a program called Security Matters Hawaii. And I hope you'll join us on Fridays. Uh, we air at 10 a.m. And we're gonna be talking about those security things that really should be important to you. And you know, maybe get behind the scenes on some, some things that you may not know about the industry or about products or even about your habits. Um, security is all about people, processes, and products, and we hope to bring that to you in an informative and um, hopefully a useful way. So again, 10, 10 a.m. on Fridays, Security Matters Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me. Thank you. Aloha and welcome back to White Food and Farmer Series. I am your host today, Matthew Johnson, and we were talking to Lizzie Porter with Bees Greens Company and talking about her new venture of container farming at StoreQuest in Waipaho. And very fascinating. And uh, we were kind of talking about how you got into it, where this idea came from. Um, what I want to talk a little bit about, it's just kind of like the, what's the operations like? So you found, uh, farm, what's the name again? Freight uh, Farms. Freight Farms. Yeah. So you found this company in Boston that kind of had this, you know, in a, in a box farm system set up. So you, you made that investment mm -hmm. and then you went through the process of shipping it here in Hawaii, which is no small feat. And right. then you had to truck it um, to StoreQuest parking lot. Actually, well, yeah, what you were telling me before, like what are some of the challenges you run in, ran into with that? Yeah, um, so just, there, um, it's almost a totally normal container on the outside. There's a couple modifications yeah. to it, which um, unfortunately means that it was like non-standard to ship it over. Yeah. So that, you know, just starting there made it a little extra expensive to get it, because um, yeah. they had trucked it to the port of Long Beach uh, in yeah. LA and then getting it shipped from there to here. So that was sort of an adventure. Um, yeah. And then I was a challenge to get someone to truck it up because of basically to get it into the spot um, yeah. was a little, didn't, there wasn't quite the runway um, that a truck would need to just truck it straight in. So in the end, um, we had to find someone to crane it in. Wow. Um, which was pretty wild to see this big old shipping container go in. It had to go over some power lines, and you're just kind of seeing it like oh, up there. Up over the power lines. Yeah, so it was, it was, a, it was, it was awesome to see it. Yeah. But it was um, definitely an expense that I hadn't expected. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, uh, Making me a long-term tenant in my location. Making me not want to move again. Like, never leaving. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that was, that was a little bit challenging. And, um, you know, with any new business, there's always going to be some surprises. So um, in the end, you know, they, it wasn't something I couldn't overcome. And, um, you know, sometimes it's a bummer to take that hit in the beginning. But um, I really, you know, I really believe in the idea and what we're doing. And I think it was worth it in the end. So. Well, it's cool. So you're also talking about just, just being an entrepreneur and kind of, you know, running a business that you just kind of have to be prepared for the grind. And there's always going to be these things that pop up that, you know, you can never put in a business plan or even think about. Right. And so, yeah, having that, that problem solving. So it seems like you know, you're really doing a good job at that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's been good. And then, you know, and honestly, just once, once we got it all up and going and getting into the farm, um, it's great to be in there, and I've had a couple of people um, come start working for me. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that they, they would agree that it's, Nice to be in a refrigerated box in the middle of the day and, you know, have all your plants just on one tower right there next to you. Yeah. You can just grab them. You don't have to be walking acres. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's pretty nice in there, too. <laughs> good, a good sound system in there as well. Good, good work environment. But yeah, it's fun. Nice. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the actual kind of operation. So, so yeah, you got the, the container in there and you hooked up to the water, to the power, um, and then you have your hydroponic systems going. So you mentioned before, like, um, so it's a container, so it's about 230 square feet? It's a 40-foot container, so it's 320 square feet. Okay. Um, yeah, and so when it's at uh, maximum maximum efficiency, um, which we're not quite at yet, we're still kind of yeah. ramping it up, experimenting, um, but it can get to almost two acres of annual yield um, is, is the stats they give. Two acres. Well, um, so I think it's wow. 1.8 to, to two, depending on you what can, you're growing. You, you, can, know, right? you can round up, two, it's okay. Two, that sounds good, right? Um, <laughs> We're not gonna come back and check the numbers. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, no, so it's really efficient, and uh, maybe not exactly in my location, but it does have the opportunity that um, 
you know, when you're when time comes to expand, maybe just put another one on top. Um, there are others around the world that have these the same setup that I have. Um, these freight farms, um, freight farm boxes. Um, and I know some of them are stacked. Um, cool. So yeah, it's that same 320 square foot per, footprint. You might get if you get three of them. You know, that's like almost six acres a. Five and a half, six acres of, of growing and a very, very small footprint. <laughs> wow. So. Cool. So, um, talk a little bit about then. So you've you've got you know all this like fancy software and you've got these systems that you know putting the nutrients in and tracking the water. So like how so how much manpower does this take? Do you have to go there uh, every day or can you just do everything from your phone. I mean, what what's the what's the yeah. reality of it like for you? Yeah. Um, so you know, there there are weeks when it feels like something's going wrong, and I go in every day. Yeah. Um, but there was times, especially before I had hired anyone, um, and uh, I had actually my brother had come out the first two months with me to help me get set up and get going, and then he went back to LA. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a couple months there when it was really just me working, and um, I would go visit my family for four or five days and just monitor from my phone, you know, like, what? um, so I wouldn't, you know, I'm not trying to do that all the time. And I did hire people so that, <laughs> so yeah. that you know, at least someone's on site if something's going wrong. But, yeah, yeah. um, yeah, the reality of it is that when things are running the way they should, I go in, um, twice a week, maybe a third time, um, during the week to just kind of check on everything to plant, to harvest. Um, and then I will go to the farmer's markets on the weekends and sell there. So that's kind of just, um, picking stuff up and dropping off at the end of the day. Um, but in terms of actually going into work, is probably um, two or three days a week, usually. Wow. That is incredible. That's yeah. like everybody's dream. <laughs> yeah. You're really figuring it out. So uh, so then kind of talking about going from there, do you foresee, like, once everything is kind of uh, maximized for efficiencies, is this going to be, you know, this one container, is this going to be able to generate enough revenue to to cover your costs and pay back on your investment and also provide you and your workers with with uh, a living wages? Yeah, um, so the one container probably wouldn't be able to do, you know, me and several yeah. workers, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. might take a while. Um, but really the idea is to, yeah, kind of dial it in in this year, um, kind of the first year to figure out what people want, what people like. Um, and honestly, it was a lot of tech that went into it in the first place to mm -hmm. figure out how much of that tech we really need and want to put in again if, yeah. we, if we're going to expand. Um, and, you know, do we want to get the same system again? Do we want to build it out ourselves kind of more specifically to the to what we need? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of all the, what we're still working on and still figuring out. Um, and it is kind of an experimental way to grow out of the walls like this. And, yeah. you know, it's kind of interesting to see the way things react to, to gravity when they have to grow, kind of go up and then out. Um, oh, yeah. So it's kind of just a question of figuring out, like, um, what we like and what we don't like. Um, but the plan is definitely to expand. Um, and again, it, not necessarily into containers. Containers are really... Um, I think a really interesting idea um, and really nice. And if push comes to shove, if you need to pick it up and move it, you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's nice. Um, but then, you know, really kind of the mission behind the whole the whole business is um, is reusing space. Um, is, that's a big part of it for me. Is just kind of using space that otherwise wouldn't be used for something like this. And so maybe that me does mean um, like a warehouse or something mm -hmm. um, in the future instead, if that makes more more sense and can be more efficient. Um, and again, it kind of is like, you know, do we want to have a couple containers that have slightly different environments in there? That could be a nice way to really isolate and, and maximize for specific crops. So. Yeah. Very fascinating. So, unfortunately, we only have like two minutes left. So, why don't we just kind of um, finish off and, and without giving away too much of your proprietary visions mm -hmm. for the future? But, you know, it seems like you are a, a futures type thinker, and this is kind of where you know, impetus for everything. But just kind of thinking about, you know, what, uh, how far do you think this can go with, because you know, right now you're just kind of testing it out mm -hmm. in this one container. And there's some other small farms like Metro Grow with uh, Carrie who's growing. Uh, inside of an office space, really, like where where do you see this going, or where where do you see the potential? Um, I mean, I think the the biggest potential with it is really um, is the decentralization a little bit. You know, is just to kind of to make it more accessible to people. Um, 
so that kind of anyone can grow like this. And maybe, you know, maybe that means restaurants have their own little systems mm -hmm. like this. Maybe it means that um, neighborhoods have their own little systems like this. And if you, once we can kind of dial in the tech and um, kind of on a big scale, really bring the cost of it down a little bit, um, it can become pretty turnkey. And it would be great to just see, like, you know, each neighborhood kind of has their own. And, you know, whether it's, um, like, the kids that want to come in and kind of help out with it, or and there's, you know, a manager or two who can kind of keep an eye on it. Um, I think that's really kind of a big potential of it, so that everyone can have, you know, really safe food and really local food. Um, and, yeah, and, and not have to worry if, if it's a dump in rain or it's a super hot summer or yeah. whatever. They're still going to get their salad that week, you know. Or if there's slugs <laughs> crawling across the yeah. greens and Absolutely, all yeah. those other issues. Yeah. Well, cool. Lizzie, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to eavesdrop on your <laughs> conversation last week and uh, coming on the show. Uh, look forward to having you back here uh, maybe in a year or so to talk about uh, where you are with the business. Sure. Sounds great. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining the show. And we will be back two weeks from now, Thursday at 4 p.m. Aloha. Aloha.